delivered a better message to me than to tell me, he said, look, the man is playing hide and seek with the Muslim. So I take this out. He's playing hide and seek. If you think of a better caption, you tell me, I give you a reward. I lost a bet with Jimmy Swaggart the other night. I lost a bet with him, you see. Uh, uh, but I won the debate. That's what I claim. I lost a bet. I lost a hundred dollars with him. I bet, you know, and I lost. But here I said, look, I'm prepared to give you. Give me a better caption, and I give you a hundred dollars. A better caption than this, for this picture. Give me a better caption. You Americans are very good at giving captions. Huh? Give it to me. So, he's actually playing hide and seek with the Muslims. He doesn't mean a debate. He's telling his people to go and convert them. And in that dialogue, we will come out second best. Because my people are not trained. These are all trained men. So he said, let us talk in public. We have differences. We say, Jesus is not God. He said, he is. Let's talk about it. Let the world know. And let them judge for themselves with truth lies. We are big enough today. Not like in the good old days, pull out, pulling out a dagger. I disagree with you, so I'm going to put a knife through you. You disagree with me, you're going to put a knife through me. No, we are so big. Look at us. I'm speaking the most sensitive subjects from the time I arrived in the United States on the 31st of October. Most sensitive topics. And nobody has shouted me down. Nobody has caught me, as a matter of fact, in all my life. No Christian or Jew has held me like this. Nobody. And yet I'm talking the most sensitive topics. Either I'm a superman, you know, angelic, or that you people are so tolerant and good and kind. You are prepared to give me a hearing, though it's going against your grain. He says, look, I agree to disagree with you. And I salute you for that. You give me that opportunity to talk to you. So the, His Holiness, it was not a debate. It was a suggestion for a dialogue. And he didn't want to respond because he didn't really mean it. I apologize that there's not a lot of time left. May we have time for just one more question? Okay, we can have the last two then, okay? Thank you. Well, you have said that Jesus didn't write any of his, uh, you know, that the apostles were wrote the things, right? In the, gospel, in the gospel, you have said that Jesus did not write the gospel or, uh, or he didn't even tell the, the apostles to write. That's correct. That Jesus Christ never wrote a word. He didn't instruct anybody to write a word. And not a word was written in his lifetime. What did you say about the, the book of Revelation where, where he appears to St. John or John and he told him to write, uh, he appeared to him? I said in his lifetime. You know, that's English. Lifetime means while he walked this earth. If somebody sees a dream, if somebody sees a dream, call it vision, a dream, is not walking in his, I said, in his lifetime, before his cruci alleged crucifixion. Did he tell anybody to write a word? Did he? Did he tell Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Did he commission anybody? Was a word written in his lifetime? A word? No. You see, you read the internal evidence that shows that Matthew even write Matthew. You know, Matthew 9, 9. You know what it says? No, it's not a matter of belief, my son. It's a matter of fact. The fact is, look, in his lifetime, that means while the man walked this earth, not, he didn't ask anybody. Nor did anybody write a word. That's the long and short of it. Now, afterwards, somebody sees a dream. Did Matthew see a dream? Did Luke see a dream? No. Luke tells you why he wrote. You know, he tells you. Why did he write? He said, you know, he sees a lot of people have written a lot of things concerning the faith that we are preaching. So, it's having had perfect understanding from the very first, it seemed good to me also. These other guys, less educated than I, if they can write books, if they can write volumes, why can't I? I'm a physician, I can do a better job, I can do things more systematically. So he says, listen to the words, the, your language. He said, it seemed good to me also. Revelation is a book of dream. You know you read there, after a man has eaten too much, when you eat too much, you know you have hello, that type of things that goes through your mind. He sees a beast with seven horns, and every horn with a hundred eyes, with the eyes outside and the eyes inside. Who sees dreams like that? Man, you know when he's eaten too much of protein. I appreciate you being here too, and I, we got here late, so I haven't gotten all of it. But uh, I, was, I would like to ask you, you not sure 
you get through this, but you have some of the others, please. You, it takes you 20 minutes to answer a question. Please allow me one minute to ask it, okay? And my question is, uh, you've attacked my country, uh, my faith, uh, but uh, I'm going to finish. Uh, would I, and, and to me what you're doing tonight is, I happen to be a pilot, and you're taking the wheel of that airplane, bringing it up here on the table, and saying, this is Christianity, let's see if it'll ever fly. And you can attack that wheel, you can look at the bearings, you can look at the, the struts, the shocks, and tell me that it'll never fly. And you're pulling pieces out of Christianity and telling me that Christianity will never fly. When I know in my heart, and that's the testimony that I have for you tonight, that Jesus Christ is very real. He's a very real person. He's real to me. I wonder what, what Muhammad is to you. The question that I have, I guess, is that you are privileged enough, because the United States of America is a Christian country, sir, to have this forum tonight. Would I have the same type of a forum in your country that's been Islam? That's the question. You see, amen. I am really grateful for this opportunity, and I do take off my hat to the American nation.